Phil Robertson with WFTV in Orlando. Going back to the... Good afternoon, and welcome to today's Space Shuttle Accident Briefing. Before I introduce the administrator, I need to pass along a couple of notes. We're pressed for time today, so we will have to end today's briefing at uh, 4 o'clock. If we run long, Administrator O'Keefe may have to leave, so please bear with us. To get to as many reporters as possible, we will only be able to take one question per reporter today. And with us, and as with all previous briefings, please wait until you have the microphone before asking your questions. And remember to give us your affiliation. With that, we have Administrator Sean O'Keefe, Bill Reedy, Associate Administrator of Space Flight, and Michael Kostelnik, Deputy Associate Administrator of International Space Station and Space Station Programs. We'll begin with a brief statement by Administrator O'Keefe. Thank you, Glenn. Um, since about 1 o'clock on Saturday, February the 1st, we've had an opportunity to get together on a regular basis uh, with a series of press briefings to update you on developments, uh, provide the facts and the evidence that we've had an opportunity to collect or uh, has been made available to us. Uh, and over the course of that time, since uh, early afternoon on the 1st of February, last Saturday, uh, an awful lot of information has come to light, to be sure. Uh, but very importantly, I think the, the approach that we've taken here is an effort not only to be uh, forthcoming with the public and make sure that all the, the evidence and information, in fact, is made available, but also it's turned out to be an extremely useful uh, approach so that others who are, are uh, examining information or data or uh, imagery or whatever else, pictures, uh, have had an opportunity then to advise us of what they believe they have that might be pertinent or helpful in that process. So this has been extremely uh, useful approach, and I want to thank the members of the media particularly uh, and the public in general, I think, for the overwhelmingly positive and helpful response uh, of trying to gather that information and the evidence as we've worked through uh, what has been our effort to gather the information, collect the evidence, bring to bear all the facts necessary in our quest to determine exactly what caused this terrible, horrific accident on the morning of Saturday, February the 1st. Our approach at this stage now is, given those daily press reviews, is to now transition a bit, if you will, to a more uh, st structured approach uh, that will be taken from this stage forward rather than a daily press conference from NASA directly. As again, our attempts have been to, to release all the information we know at the time we have it available. Uh, is instead now, I think, what you begin to hear and see more specific uh, commentary from is the Columbia Accident Investigation Board, chaired by Admiral Hal Gaiman. We'll have an opportunity to uh, discuss more thoroughly the scope and pace of the investigation that is being undertaken uh, to determine, again, the causes of this horrific accident. Tomorrow, uh, Admiral Gaiman, I'm advised, will conduct a uh, press conference from Houston, uh, introduce the members of the Columbia Accident Investigation Board, uh, and give a presentation then on where they see the pace of the investigating, investigation proceeding. Uh, so at that stage in the game, I think the, the appropriate course is we will defer uh, to the Columbia Accident Investigation Board to set the pace, if you will, of discussions of what, uh, how the investigation itself is progressing and the activities or, or relevant events they see as appropriate. So I would suggest uh, to the members of the media to consult with them and await their uh, determination tomorrow of the frequency or, or scope of activities they intend to conduct. NASA will continue to release information. Uh, and uh, facts and evidence as we collect it on a more uh, and less structured basis, but on a periodic basis as we see the information come available. Again, an awful lot uh, has occurred in the last nine days. Uh, all of it having been released in the manner that we have, we'll continue to do that as we see appropriate. So stay tuned. We'll be uh, scheduling uh, press opportunities to the extent that we have things to, to release and make available. But in terms of the pace of the investigation and the conduct of how the activities will be conducted from that standpoint, 
uh, Admiral Gaiman uh, will give you much more on that tomorrow. So we're moving this as real time as we can uh, can do, uh, but at the same time being as fully disclosive in terms of the approach that uh, is being conducted there. Um, it also is a reflection, I think, of the the, the manner uh, in which we intend to fully support and assure that the Columbia Accident Investigation Board has the independence and the objectivity to proceed as they see appropriate. Uh, again, our focus has been to assure that they have all the information uh, and all the material available. They are now uh, progressively, uh, uh, I think, working through the range of different issues that are necessary in order to assure that information or data that has been locked down within about a half an hour after the uh, contingency plan was activated on that fateful morning of, of February the 1st. Uh, they're now in the position of advising when they believe that information can be released uh, in terms of uh, you know, various steps that can be done uh, for software and hardware uh, that are controlled within the NASA community. Uh, at which stage that can be released uh, for continued operations, if you will. So as it affects everything from launch pads to, uh, uh, to analyses that are being conducted, whatever else, they have a very direct and important, I think, function and role in assuring that information is as thoroughly reviewed and examined by the board prior to the time that is either uh, archived or, or set aside for future uh, references as we move through this. So it's all active, all available. In addition, uh, early on in this process, uh, I think many uh, of the media are aware, and certainly some of the general public as well, that um, by Sunday afternoon, our Inspector General, uh, Robert Cobb, uh, was on the ground in, uh, at Barksdale Air Force Base in Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, and from that point forward has been an observer and engaged in a, a, a specific um, uh, activity with the Columbia Accident Investigation Board. Uh, so he is also uh, an opportunity to guarantee that as we work through this, uh, his instructions very clearly are, and under the terms of the Inspector General Act, he reports not only to the President but also to the Congress, that he understands and appreciates that his primary responsibility is to guarantee uh, the independence, the objectivity of the board, and that we are doing everything we possibly can at NASA uh, to assure that. So as we're attempting to take as many steps as we can here to make sure that we're all in pursuit of the same objective, which is to find out what it is that caused this accident and determine that set of causes uh, as expeditiously but as thoroughly as Admiral Gaiman and the Columbia Accident Investigation Board can do so. Uh, that's critically important so we can then get about the business of figuring out what the solution is that we may need to work through. Uh, and then in turn, after having those answers, determine how we then can resume safe flight operations as expeditiously as possible. Those are our objectives. Those are the ones the board clearly understands and appreciates what our intentions are in that regard. Uh, and so in the, our quest in pursuit of that, uh, we're in pursuit of the answers, and we're trying to determine exactly uh, how that can be derived, but ultimately will be guided by their recommendations, their findings of the Columbia Accident Investigation Board, and my intention upon receipt of those recommendations is to make uh, their recommendations, their findings available to the public uh, simultaneously. So I have no uh, intent, nor is anyone here within our NASA community, uh, intent upon analyzing that report or whatever. We'll do that in due course. But it is a uh, uh, responsible, I think, a responsibility we have to the public to make sure that all of that uh, informed judgment on their part is made available. So I want to assure in every way possible that all of us within the NASA community are cooperating and participating in that activity uh, to help reach that mutual objective of determining the answers, finding the solutions, and getting back to safe flight operations as soon as we can. Over the course of the weekend, I had, uh, and Friday, oh, Jesus, it seems like forever ago now, but it was just recently, 
uh, on uh, like Thursday uh, morning was at Kennedy Space Center. Uh, Thursday evening, I was at Kennedy Space Center Friday morning, attended a memorial service there, then uh, had an opportunity to, to examine uh, the facilities where we will be uh, bringing all, transporting all of the evidence and the debris that has been collected thus far and will continue to be uh, along that 500 mile swath that uh, is now very familiar to all the members of the media between Fort Worth and uh, uh, Louisiana. Uh, uh, Texas border just south of Shreveport in order to, to array that data and or the debris uh, at the facility there at Kennedy Space Center. It is a large hangar and one that we've examined directly. It's a uh, being prepared for receipt of all of the, uh, the material as it arrives and at this juncture I'm advised there are some 12,000 pieces uh, that have been collected uh, at the various uh, collection points in and around the Lufkin, Texas area, particularly uh, transported then to Boxdale Air Force Base uh, and the facilities we maintain there um, for storage and collection and tagging proper identification of uh, the evidence as is, as is understood right then and the debris that has come off the, uh, the orbiter upon uh, reentry, then with the purpose of transporting it to Kennedy Space Center. Uh, so I kind of followed that path along from Friday morning forward uh, to examine you know, the facilities where it will ultimately arrive, but then in turn we went to Houston to meet with Admiral Gaiman and his board members, uh, advised them of the procedure we are proceeding with. He has uh, concurred in our treatment of the debris, having spent the week as he did uh, there in the, the Boxdale area and all the collection points around it. Uh, and understands exactly how the recovery process is underway as we're moving through this. We also visited, uh, again, all of the, uh, the command centers uh, at uh, uh, Lufkin, Texas. Uh, talked to not only the NASA team that's there, but also our uh, emergency response coordination team from FEMA, representatives from the FBI, uh, the Texas Department of Public Service, uh, Public Safety, excuse me, uh, the National Guard members who were there uh, working through each of the, the areas around the Sabine Forest, uh, uh, trying to collect each of the, the items of debris as we moved along. Uh, we then went from there up to uh, DeBarksdale Air Force Base, this is all on Saturday, uh, to examine uh, the, the facilities of where the receipt points are of everything and all of the uh, debris that's being transported there that will then in turn be packaged and put aboard uh, transports and sent to, to Kennedy for the uh, roughly 18 to 20 hour drive that that's going to take to get it there. So this is, is, a, is a process that we're organizing as, uh, as carefully as we know how to, to treat the, the material, the debris, to get some clues uh, about exactly what happened uh, on that morning over the span of that less than 20 minutes between the time that everything was normal to the time that it should have landed. Uh, and ascertain exactly what occurred at that stage. All the evidence that uh, and, and the pieces of debris as well as parts of the orbiter that have been uh, coming forward now, all of them have uh, occurred or the pieces have been uh, identified uh, from just an area a little bit west of Fort Worth. That's the last confirmed piece that we have all the way to uh, some 250 uh, items uh, or pieces of the orbiter that have been collected and transported uh, in the state of Louisiana up to Shreveport. Everything in between that area uh, totals that roughly 12,000 pieces uh, that have been either in the point of identification and are now in the transportation phase to one of those major collection points around Lufkin or are at Bar Barksdale. The shipments to uh, uh, Kennedy Space Center will, in the Cape Canaveral area will begin uh, uh, today and tomorrow and the first arrivals of the pieces that we have collected and, and tagged and tried to identify as best that could be at that time uh, will be arriving there Wednesday is the expectation at this point. There are, again, as we've reiterated several times in our, our respective uh, uh, information briefings that we've tried to, to provide to update uh, the public on the progress of, of the activities and the effort in the recovery phase of 
uh, examining and, and identifying the debris as we've moved along. There is no favorite theory. There is no preferred or uh, um, optimal or considered more likely or more probable consequence or cause that we see uh, that's developing at this stage. Everything is on the table. Uh, if anything, the Columbia Accident Investigation Board, I think very helpfully, early in this process, again, one of the great advantages of having activated that board in accordance with the contingency plan that we had developed as one of the important post-challenger lessons learned was they recommended that we utilize a fault tree analysis of looking at every element of what could have gone wrong once we got the initial sensor readings uh, that to begin to indicate problems as uh, early as 8.53 on the morning, Eastern time on the morning of February the 1st, and then analyzing each of that uh, data to determine exactly uh, what other potential causes could have moved from that using that fault tree analysis and before uh, uh, discontinuing any pursuit on any branch of that tree, if you will, the Columbia Accident Investigation Board is examining that information before that particular analysis is closed out. So it's become a very methodical, very structured process to assure that we aren't defaulting in the direction of one favored approach or one favored theory or one more today box populi theory versus another uh, so that we're not then in turn seeing a trail that could have been pursued then start to go a little cold as we work through it. And again, this is a, a very uh, structured approach that is born of uh, the vast experience that the Columbia Accident Investigation Board members bring to this really important challenge of trying to determine the, the answer to what caused this accident. Uh, of more than 50 accidents they've been involved in collectively as members. Uh, so bringing to, uh, to bear all of the experience they've had in looking at, uh, at various airline incidents, uh, military aircraft incidents, you name it, any number of different mishap investigations, accident investigations, tragedies they've been involved in, USS Cole, you name it. All the, of those kinds of experiences are far more than what anyone or any collection of the deep expertise we have here at, at NASA could possibly hope to match. And so we're being guided by the the methodology that they have and bringing the collective experience they bring to bear to assure that we're looking at every dimension of this and not closing out or inadvertently ignoring some range of uh, opportunities to examine what the, the, uh, the causes could have been in these cases. And that has proven to be exceptionally beneficial and one of the great advantages of having activated that board within hours after this incident occurred. Uh, the, uh, the Game and Board uh, was uh, identified and, and named by uh, uh, mid-afternoon of sa Saturday, September the 1st. Their first meeting was by, via telecon uh, by 5 p.m. that evening. Uh, they were all uh, advised to uh, uh, plan to report to Barksdale Air Force Base the next day by Admiral Gaiman, uh, the Deputy Administrator here, uh, Fred Gregory. Uh, made arrangements and escorted several of the members, uh, picked them up along the way, if, uh, along, along the process the next day, and brought them to Barksdale Air Force Base. Everyone was there and meeting by mid-afternoon, Sunday, the 2nd of February. That's the way most accident and mishap investigation board efforts work, and it's one of the, the lessons learned from Post Challenger. It's the way the National Transportation Safety Board does operations. There's a range of different other parallel benchmarks that we've used in this case, and it's proven to be an exceptionally useful uh, approach to how we proceed to assure we're on top of the evidence and information from the moment that it occurred and forward uh, to this time. Uh, as Glenn mentioned, uh, I'm going to have to, to wrap up a little bit early here, but my colleagues uh, will be here through the next uh, 40 minutes or so. I'm going to have to, to uh, dismiss myself here in about 20 minutes uh, for um, uh, further discussions uh, with colleagues at the White House on a variety of different questions we're working with. But uh, Bill Reedy, again, the Associate Administrator for Spaceflight and a gent who 
Uh, I've been with uh, seemingly every moment of every day for the past nine days. We were together uh, at the skid strip at, uh, at Kennedy's uh, Space Center uh, on the morning of the 1st of February, anticipating uh, in a very um, upbeat mood the arrival of uh, STS-107 after an extremely beneficial, extremely successful mission they had conducted. Uh, and so we've been together throughout this entire activity, and he certainly... Uh, can give you a perspective uh, that we've been working through as a consequence of that as well. Also, Mike Kostelnik, our Deputy Associate Administrator uh, for Space Station and Space Shuttle programs uh, in recognition of the very close association between two of those uh, elements is with us here is to, to work through some of these discussions, and neither of them are, are strangers to you after the course of uh, uh, the past nine days of activities. They have been the folks who've conducted most of the discussions here out of NASA headquarters as we've then transferred to uh, discussions at Johnson. So in sum, let me uh, just reiterate again uh, that the, the investigation proceeds apace. Uh, it's moving at a, uh, a very, uh, I think, an important rate at this stage as the evidence and the, and the, the material uh, debris has been collected and is moving now towards uh, consolidation, if you will at the uh, uh, Cape Canaveral Kennedy Space Center. Uh, and all the evidence we're collecting at this point, all the facts and material and analyses we're conducting out of either the Johnson Space Center or here at headquarters or at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, or at Kennedy Space Center are all being coordinated through the activities of the Columbia Accident Investigation Board to assure that we're looking at every possible dimension of what could have occurred here and eliminating no uh, approach or, or uh, theory as we move through this as a means to devise those answers and come to the conclusion of what caused this horrific accident. And at this juncture, you know what we know at this juncture by virtue of all the information that has been released, and that is the uh, sum and summation and all of its volume uh, that has been released to date. It's on the websites that's been publicly discussed uh, at great length uh, is where we are at this juncture. And so from here on, uh, trying to assemble these facts into some order that will then give us a more comprehensive look based on the extended background that all the members of the investigation board have to help us reach some understanding of what they think uh, led to this particular tragedy is what we're in pursuit of at this juncture. So with that, let me open it up to questions. And again, thank you all for your patience and willingness to be here this afternoon. We'll start here at headquarters. Frank? 